I believe that the first thing that we need to talk about in organic chemistry is the star of the show, which is the element carbon. And as such, we will try to concentrate on the basic things that we know about carbon based from your understanding of gen chem and then move forward from that. First, you have to remember that carbon has an atomic number of 6. Of course, this is based on the periodic table of elements. Now, remember that the atomic number of an atom represents its number of protons. So, carbon has 6 protons. But also, that means that it's also equal to the number of electrons, which is pretty much the focus of what we want to talk about now. So, that means that carbon has 6 electrons. Let me use this symbol to, to mean electrons. And uh, in general chemistry, we usually specify this in greater detail by writing the so-called electron configuration. For carbon, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Now, just to refresh you on the basics of quantum numbers, the numbers here, 1 and 2, the large numbers represent the principal quantum number. In, in other words, those are just the energy levels or energy shells. Whereas the letters like S and P stand for the subshells or the sublevels, the exponents are basically the electrons. So that's why when you add all these exponents, 2 plus 2 plus 2, that's 6. Okay? Now, remember this. I just told you that 1 and 2 are the energy levels. And in this case, since 2 is the highest number, we can imagine once again that, you know, if this is carbon, this is the so-called nucleus. This is the one that contains protons and neutrons. This is the first energy level and this is the second energy level. Therefore, the second is the outermost or what we call the valence energy level. This is important because the valence is usually the one that directly participates in bonding, okay, in, in making chemical bonds. So, in that case, if I add these valence electrons for carbon, that would be 2 plus 2. That is 4 electrons. So, 4, and let me clarify, valence electrons. And remember that you know, for atoms, for elements, stability is a necessity. We don't want our atoms to be unstable, okay, in general. And in order to be stable, we follow what we call the octet rule. Essentially, this means that in order for an element to be stable, we must have a total of eight valence electrons because octa means eight. So, if carbon has already four valence electrons, in order to have eight, that is very simple math, carbon needs four more electrons. And let's say that these are the four electrons that we want. These would come from other atoms. So, if these come from other atoms, in order for these to be a property of carbon also, they must participate in bonding with the electrons of the carbon that we have. So, this means that in total, carbon has the capacity to form four bonds. Let me repeat that, four bonds. And this is a really important you know, magic number if I would want to call it. In other words, we can call carbon tetravalent. That's just a fancy word for carbon having four bonds. Well, tetra means four, right? Now, in organic chemistry, we also have the other nonmetals, which we will see a lot along the way, such as nitrogen. The atomic number is 7. It's essentially beside carbon at the periodic table. It will have 7 electrons, and therefore, it will have this electron configuration. 1s2, 2s2, but now since it has 1 electron more, then we will have 2p3 instead of the 2. So now, that means 2 plus 3, we have 5 valence electrons. Now, since nitrogen has 5, in order to be 8, of course, that is simple math, we need 3 more electrons to satisfy the octet rule. Now, that means that I have 3 electrons from other sources that would be good enough to give us 3 bonds for nitrogen. Therefore, the magic number for nitrogen is 3 bonds, or we call it as trivalent. 
Now you will notice that even if we follow the octet rule, there are still two electrons right here that do not participate in bonding and they should not do so because if they participate in bonding, that would give a charge to nitrogen. So in general, these are by default non-bonding or in general chemistry, we call non-bonding electrons as lone electrons. And since this comes as a pair or two pieces together, this is what we call a lone pair. This setup that you see here is very uh, particularly evident in the structure, let's say, of this molecule. Hopefully, you already have uh, an understanding or an, a background that NH3 right here means ammonia. Diba? This is the structure for ammonia. And usually, when we draw ammonia in textbooks or in probably if you have notes of this before, you would always have this lone pair. So once again, nitrogen usually has three bonds and a lone pair to follow the octet rule. Then probably we can just follow up with oxygen. Now in order to save time, you know, we can just see a pattern. If carbon has four valence electrons, if nitrogen has five valence electrons, then oxygen predictably being one more in terms of atomic number to nitrogen would have six. Okay, so just it's like five plus one. And uh, now since oxygen has six valence electrons, of course, in order to follow the octet rule, we need just two more electrons. That would be enough to give oxygen two bonds. So the magic number for oxygen is two bonds. Or we call this as divalent. And you see that it would actually have two lone pairs. That is very much evident in a molecule as simple as HOH or water. This is H2O. As you see, if you remember, maybe some of you have this idea that when you draw the structure of water, the bonds are supposed to be bent as opposed to, you know, some may ask, why don't you write like this in a straight line? Because supposedly the bonds are supposed to be, you know, very much separate from one another according to the valence shell electron pair repulsion. We don't because we have the lone pairs pushing these bonds down, okay? Then we will also talk about halogens. So halogens include atoms like chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, and what's common about them is that they all have seven valence electrons, okay? We don't, already, we don't need this anymore, I guess, to assume that, you know, we have seven valence electrons to accomplish the octet rule, we need one more. So that is very much uh, equivalent to one more bond. In other words, halogens are basically monovalent. You will always see our halogens bonding one time only to a particular atom and never more than just a single bond. The same applies to hydrogen. Well, hydrogen uh, violates the octet rule because it only has this configuration 1s1. In order to become 1s2, you just need 1 to become 2. So that's one electron, which you know directly translates to one bond only. So the same as with halogens, hydrogen is also monovalent. So in structures, you're always supposed to see our hydrogen being bonded once. The same with our chlorine, fluorine, bromine, and iodine. This is the backbone of organic chemistry. Remember these patterns. Carbon has four, nitrogen three, oxygen two, halogens and hydrogen one bond. Because if you do not understand this and you cannot keep track of this basic fact for the next videos, you're in for some big trouble.